honest review of Manchester United's draw, which almost felt like a defeat against Brentford. We'll be breaking it down in this video, um, giving you the latest and the kind of stats from the game as well. So don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos. There's been plenty of videos out already, but this is kind of analysing one last time the disaster class that was that game at Brentford. We'll be, as I said, giving you some stats. I mean, it was obvious that we didn't deserve to win. Like any player, fan, pundit, everyone knew that we didn't deserve to win. The performance, quality that we showed in the game was barely any, was barely anything. We we didn't really give a fight. Half the players didn't really look like they were bothered. And listen, Brentford should absolutely destroyed us. Maybe three, four nil. And um, the midfield got absolutely ran through. We were really bad in possession, uh, and we got we just couldn't get any control over the game. Brentford had all the power in the game. Um, and yeah, they they absolutely destroyed us in, in the majority of the parts. If you could take two positives or maybe three positives from the whole entire game, Mount getting the first goal, Varane in the 45 minutes, but he did get injured, but it was only precaution. Um, and Onan, I think they were the most three three important players for Manchester United. I mean, the negatives flipping out. Rashford, Rashford, yes, we know he says he cares, but just show it on the pitch. Like He's saying in interviews that he cares a lot about the club. No one can question his loyalty towards the club. But when you're not seeing the basics on the pitch, it does kind of cause to worry like what's actually going on with Rashford because he just doesn't look he doesn't look asked on the pitch. He doesn't look like he's bothered at all. And he does look like he's he's not really fighting for Manchester United anymore. The simple things from Rashford that we expected to see or the simple things we require from any wingers just to be positive and attack your play. And Rashford does that, but he always seems to to never get it right. He, he there was one where he was one on one on the counter attack and he just ran into the Brentford players. Um, and then it led to like a Bruno shot at the edge of the box. Listen, we've got to be decisive. Our wingers are certainly, certainly Rashford. I don't think he's been near enough to the player that he is. And I don't know what that is. He just he doesn't seem to care. And that that could, and I think he's got to have like a, a reminder. I think he, he has to be dropped. And then Mount, in the 15, 20 minutes cameo that he had on the left wing, he probably did look better than Rashford the whole game, getting the goal as well. To maybe try him out on that left wing may be a better idea. As I said, I think Ten Hag got got exposed. Listen, the possession was 53% to Manchester United, 47% for Yeah, 47% for Brentford. That that stat is stocking in itself. Brentford absolutely cooked us in that game. And the fact that we had a little bit of possession, I'm happy about that. Um I think we we just couldn't get on the ball. I mean, we we couldn't even string three, four, five passes together. And the possession stats don't really don't really obviously show the game. And we're going to get into some more stats. Brentford had thirty one shots to Manchester United 11. 31 shots. Um, they had the most touches in our box ever in a Premier League game. And listen, that was a dominance to display that it was from Brentford. They were consistently on it. They knew exactly how to target Manchester United and they did kind of pick up on our weaknesses and they did kind of try and exploit that. I think with Eric Ten Hag, we know what sort of manager we're going to and performance we're going to get. He's stubborn at times as well and that that's not going to help him at Manchester United. I think he's got to look at the bigger picture now. We've got, what, nine Premier League games left and it's all about getting the results. You've got Sheffield in there, Arsenal in there, Brighton in there. Um, no, we've got Chelsea, Liverpool, Sheffield, Brighton, Arsenal... Um, let me see if I can find the other games. So we've got Chelsea, Liverpool, Bournemouth, Sheffield United, Burnley, Crystal Palace, Arsenal, Brighton, and then obviously we've got the the preseason for next thing. But listen, oh my days at that! When we've got huge nine games ahead of us, we're we're, we're drifting away from that top four position, and it's looking ever ever unlikely that we are going to get it as the game goes on. Um, 31 shots we conceded and Onana did very very well to save the ones that he did I think Onana's first half was okay but I think he got better in that in that second half listen we had five shots apiece on target um, listen I don't even know where those Manchester United shots come from I mean Hoyland had one probably the Mount was the second one I can't even think maybe Bruno probably had one um, and listen, we just weren't we weren't good enough, and we're acting like we we created chances. We didn't create anything, so we can't kind of blame the attack. I think the midfield, I think the gap that midfield is a huge issue for Manchester United, and um, we just haven't seemed to get that balance. And maybe it is time to take Bruno out for for a few games because listen, I do think Kobe Mania and Casemiro do complement and work together. But is is Mount um, can Mount replace Bruno or can Eriksson replace Bruno just for a few games? 
just to see what will happen. And listen, I'm not saying Bruno should be sold or whatever, but just change it up. Bruno Fernandes plays every game. Um, and listen, I don't, I don't think he has been very. I, I like him as a player, but he's no, he's not, he's not been anywhere near good enough this season. And that, that's a huge worry because he's a good player. Um, and we know he can do it. We've seen it. But this season, whether he's burnt out, I don't know. He's just the quality isn't there. In terms of tackles as well, they were all uh, all over us. There were more aerial duels, 28 to our 17. They had more tackles. More We had more passes completed. We had more total passes, but we didn't. they were probably just ours around our own box. Um, listen, not happy with the performance. Um, but yeah, the, the United lead slipped. And again, it just wasn't, wasn't good enough. So Eric Ten Hag did get exposed. This is kind of the Honest Brentford review, as we always do. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Comment, subscribe if you are new. Listen, let's let's see what happens. It was a disaster again against Brentford. We we're a very very inconsistent team, and that that's not going to help Ten Hag. But thanks for watching.